Good morning. Today we're looking at example 3 out of section 3.5, an introduction to Solver from Business Calculus with Excel. In the last example, we had ones where the graphs were deceptive and we used Solver to clean it up. This time we're looking at a case where Solver does some unpredictable things and we want to look at a graph to make sure that we're giving reasonable answers. The function involved is one with a jump discontinuity for x less than 0. The function is 5x minus 3. For x greater than 0, it's 4 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus 1. So I have a straight line and a parabola. Excel in graphing connects the points. This connecting point isn't really there. I'm going to be interested in starting at a couple of points, looking at what happens when I start at point 5 and minus 1 asking it for a minimum, a maximum, and a root. And the basic technique that Solver does is it's sliding towards what it thinks is the correct answer. So if it's sliding towards what it thinks is the correct answer, if it jumps over a discontinuity, it may get confused. So we anticipate at point 5, it's going to find the minimum just fine. It should find the maximum, although it may leap. If it tries to find the root, it's going to slide downhill and get confused. If I start at minus 1, if I have constraints, it'll find the root. If I don't have constraints, it might leap. I need to have constraints for the maximum. The minimum, there are two things that could happen. It could get really close to the right answer and say that's fine, or it could leap and give an answer over there. It's somewhat unpredictable what will happen. Let's start looking at point 5. I'm going to open up Solver. My y value is b31, my x value is a31. The first thing I'd like to do is find a minimum. I ask Solver to do that, and it correctly finds the minimum. I'm going to reset my x value to 0.5. I'm going to ask Solver again. This time, I'm going to ask it to find a value of 0 to find a root. I tell it to solve, and it's going to say, I'm confused. I don't know how to find a root. I've slid downhill to here, and I can't get a root out of that. That's what we expect to happen. You need to be close enough to a root. I'm going to cancel. I'm going to ask solver again. This time I'm going to ask it for a maximum. And when asked maximum, it goes up to zero, which is in fact a max. Going downhill from zero, you've got to go down in either direction, so it found the local max. So at point five, everything worked fine. Now we're going to look at minus one as our starting point. I'm going to open up Solver again. I'm going to ask it to try and find a minimum first and ask Solver to find a minimum. And what Solver did is it found a minimum, but it didn't find the local minimum we were expecting. It jumped over because it slid downhill to zero, and that brought it up there, and then it slides downhill again. I'm going to try and find, starting at minus one, this time I'm going to try and find a root. I'd like it to set to a value of zero. And it slid down and jumped over and said, I can't find a solution because it's gotten to a place where it's trapped. I'm going to reset my value at minus one. I'm going to start with solver. I ask it to find a maximum. I tell it to solve. And it found a maximum, but the maximum it found was not the maximum we were expecting, but the maximum that was the local maximum here. I now want to ask the same questions again, this time adding in constraints. I'd like to add the constraint that my x value, a31, has to be less than or equal to zero. And I'd like to also add in that A31 
has to be greater than or equal to minus 2. And given that, first of all, I'd like to find if it can find a root for me. And it finds the solution and finds the correct so solution once I've limited it to a range that doesn't let it jump wildly. I reset my value at minus 1, ask it to find a maximum. And it finds the maximum that we expect. I reset my value minus 1 and ask it to find a minimum with the constraints. And it's found the solution and its minimum is something that's really close to 0 but not quite at 0. So one of the things I need to be careful of is jump discontinuities. You saw that it caused problems that Solver got confused when it left past the jump continuity because it's looking at small regions and if it jumps a little bit it may have a big jump and not be able to get back. So when we're doing Solver we need to think about what's happening and make sure that we've given it a range that doesn't include jump discontinuity. Thank you.